Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. And today I'm going to try to explain uh, what happened with the mask mandate. So stay tuned. So when a judge is appointed to the federal bench and confirmed by the Senate, they really have one primary job, and that is respecting the Constitution of the United States. In other words, <clears throat> everything that they do has to uphold the Constitution of the United States. Built in to the Constitution of the United States is a little thing called separation of powers. The reason that the legislative portion of the government, the Article I portion of the government, legislates is because it is the branch of government that is closest to the people. In other words, the House is elected every two years. They have to run for re-election every two years. There's an election coming up in November of this year. The Senate is a little more distant from the people. They only get elected every six years. But they are all elected. Congress is an elected body. And as a result, when they stray far from what the public wants, the public has the ability to remove them. Not that they've done a very good job in that regard over the last several years. But be that as it may, that's why the legislative body gets to make the laws, because it's closest to the people. The executive branch gets to execute the laws. Now, the executive body of the government, whether that's the Department of Justice or the Department of the Interior or the Department of Transportation, each of those entities has a bit of what I would call prosecutorial discretion. In other words, they have the right within the broad body of law to pick and choose which things they are going to try hardest to enforce. And generally speaking, the law has always been that the public has no right to force the executive branch to do any particular kind of enforcement. So, for example, if your neighbor was routinely operating a diesel truck and it was pouring out lots of diesel exhaust, you couldn't call the EPA and say, hey, I want you to come and do this. And if they didn't do that, take the EPA to court. And that's because the executive branch has discretion over what it does, so long as it stays within the broad outlines of the statute that set up that particular entity. The third branch, the Article III branch, which of course is the courts, they have one duty. That is to enforce, or to, I'm sorry, to adjudicate issues that arise between the people and the government between the people and other people, or between the two branches of government. Now, sometimes they do a good job of that, sometimes they do a bad job of that, but that is their job. A judge owes a duty to the Constitution, to the structure of the Constitution, and it absolutely requires adherence to things like due process and fundamental rights. So let's get back to the mask mandate. The mask mandate was put in place by the Centers for Disease Control and put out there for the airlines and all public transportation, you had to wear this mask. The problem for it is that the Administrative Procedure Act, which was passed, I believe, in the 1960s, maybe the 1970s, um, basically requires that there be certain steps taken whenever a government body issues an interpretive regulation or a regulation that effectively has the force of law. And, for example, 
The ATF has a regulation that requires you to fill out a specific form under the penalties of perjury in order to buy a pistol or a rifle. They get that authority through the governing statute, which in that case I believe is the Gun Control Act, and then they have that authority and they make their regulations pursuant to the Administrative Procedure Act. And the Administrative Procedure Act has a number of uh, safeguards built into it, what I would call due process safeguards. For example, there is a notice and comment period. So if the government wants to make, for example, make a regulation about ghost guns, which it obviously has done, it has to issue notice and comment unless there is some overarching emergency. Now, I will hopefully do, an op, uh, do a video on the ghost gun thing later on. That's not the subject of this. But the bottom line is you have to have, you have to follow this Administrative Procedure Act in order for your regulation to be effective. And what the Florida judge found when she vacated this ruling or the vacated the mask mandate was that the CDC did not follow the APA and did not have authority to in place this mask mandate. Now, the first criticism of this ruling was that she was appointed by Trump. However, her duty is not to President Trump. It's not to the Republican Party. It's not to the Democratic Party. It is to the Constitution and the statutes. It's to adjudicate issues fairly. And once those issues are adjudicated, to make the order and do justice as her discretion permits. Now, she's not the final word. There is an opportunity for the federal government, if it disagrees with this, to take this up to the 11th Circuit. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals can decide whether the judge was right or whether the judge was wrong. But either way, she's not the last word. So criticizing the result on the basis of who appointed her is usually not very effective because there have been a lot of Obama-era judges who have taken the government to task on some of these issues. The bottom line, again, is you have to follow the law, you have to do the job that you're supposed to do as a judge, which is to adjudicate things fairly. Having read the opinion, I believe that she did a pretty fair job of putting this right down the middle and playing it fairly. I believe it was a very, very good ruling, and I'm happy to see the mask mandate removed from public transportation. The masks were never scientific. I'm an old respiratory therapist, and I know that nebulized particles will go right through these cloth masks. And they do all the time. They'll go around the outside of the mask. The masks were sort of like Linus's security blanket. They made people feel good. They made people feel like, hey, I'm doing something to stop this pandemic. Now, that's not to say that they didn't have some benefit. I'm sure they did. The flu was almost non-existent last year. But I will say this. I think the idea of mandating masks is a bad idea simply on the basis of personal freedom. As an American, I have a right to decide what precautions I'm going to take as long as I don't endanger somebody else. And the science was never there to say that I'm endangering someone else by virtue of not wearing a mask. And as a result, I think this was a pretty good ruling. So that's the story on the mask mandate ruling. Uh, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments down below. And if you would, please feel free to comment, like, share, subscribe, do all the things that everybody asks you to do on one of these videos. Uh, I'd be happy for you to, uh, to see to that. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.